veteran Dennis Franz. When you go from civilian life to a war zone, nobody on the planet can tell you what it's like. You can watch war movies, but you have to experience it for yourself. Everything you thought was good just goes out the window. There's thousands of enemy out there who have every intention of killing you. Your life is on the line of all the time. The only thing that makes sense is survival. We were on the runway in Quezon, but the plane never stopped. A staff sergeant dragged me out the back door and threw me into a ditch. And then I heard the explosions. The enemy was everywhere, and we were in the middle of it. For two more months, they pounded the bases with that, as many as a thousand shells and rockets a day. The artillery just landed everywhere. Twice I took cover in a ditch, only to have a rocket land in it, blow me out, and knock me unconscious. It was bad, really bad. You realize that 30 seconds from now, it could be over for you. You're always on pins and needles. That's about the time when my civilized self died. Emotions had to die and feelings had to die. All that stuff had to be shoved aside and I had to become an animal. I was on duty the night around, hit six pallets of Claymore mines in front of my bunker. I, I don't remember the explosion that buried me. It seemed like I was standing outside myself looking back at myself when I heard a voice saying, you must return. I was in the process of dying when somebody pulled me out of the rubble. Coming home after my tour, I was still in a daze when a woman walked up to me at the airport, spit on me, and called me a baby killer. That put me right back in the war zone. I wasn't just fighting the BC, I was in a battle in my own country. We were hated, protested against. We hadn't done anything but our jobs, but we were blamed for everything. Growing up, I was outgoing, happy-go-lucky, enjoying life. My brother and I used to set up puppet shows for neighborhood kids. The person I was didn't come back. I was somebody else entirely. I was angry all the time. I tried to fake it, but I didn't understand what was going on. It scared me. You're in America, but you're still back there. It's like being trapped in hell forever. Right now, I can see a firefight. I, I can see it. I can see a carpet bombing. I can see a napalm strike. I can hear 3,000 pound bombs pounding the ground, sounding like a freight train going by, and I'm shaking in my boots. More than 40 years later, I can hear it. I can see it, but I don't want to feel it. When you feel it, you get angry. You go nuts. So you bury the emotions. There's just no other way around it. You can't live like other people. You'll never be the same again, ever. Nighttime's the worst, forget it. Can't sleep when it's dark. It's like being back in the bunker. I sleep during the day as much as I can. I got married twice, maybe an attempt to get back to being human. I just destroyed both marriages. I couldn't love anybody because that was a really bad idea. I did drink for a while, but I was getting nothing out of it except drunk and broke. Drugs? No. If you're going to use drugs, you have to trust somebody who's making the drug, and I don't trust them. About five or six years ago, things just spiraled out of control, went haywire. I kept having these nightmares, and I just didn't know what was real anymore. I thought I was going crazy. My mother died, my drywall business went down the tubes, I had to declare bankruptcy, my second wife divorced me, and she got the house. 
I, I, I couldn't think, I couldn't reason. There was nothing but blind desperation. No home, no hope. And finally I decided, what's the point? So I took, I don't remember, 10 or 15 sleeping pills. My daughters found me and took me to the hospital. I woke up broke and homeless. My son, who lives in the, who was in the army in Key West, asked me to come down, and that's when I came across the Volunteers of America who were helping homeless veterans. One guy was a Vietnam vet himself, an army chopper pilot. He could see it in me and I could see it in him. He had rules. We followed the rules. He took me to the VA. What helped the most was getting the PTSD diagnosis. To finally know that I wasn't going crazy, that it was a recognized illness. I went into an inpatient treatment program and then lived in a shelter for two years. I live pretty much by myself now. Sometimes I think that for Vietnam vets like me, it's too late. 40 years of constant nightmares of, of thinking I was going completely insane. 40 years of trying to hold it together, not knowing if any of this mattered. But there is one thing I know that does matter. The kids today who are coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. I really feel for them. They deserve so much more. For these vets today, it's not too late. The best thing we can do for these incredibly courageous people is welcome them home. Say thank you with a great national parade. Listen to them. Understand what they've been through. Just do it. Because if you don't, you're going to have a problem like me. I think about my time in Quezon, and then I think about the new vets from Iraq and Afghanistan. So many who have endured the same kind of daily bomb blasts that I did. Here's some facts I heard. Over 400,000 have reported TBI, traumatic brain injury symptoms. 200,000 PTSD symptoms. When you've got those problems, it's even harder to get a job. And pretty soon, life becomes unmanageable. There's nowhere to turn. You end up on the street. Two words that should never go together are vets and homeless. But I hear that on any given night in America, there's more than 67,000 homeless vets. Maybe half of them are from my time, but there's a lot of new vets, at least 20,000 at some point in the last five years, and the number is rising. There's a lot more homeless women vets too, even some with children with no one to help them. To all you vets, I say, never give up. Never give up. You never gave up in the service, don't give up now, because you are heroes. I don't care what anybody tells you, you are heroes. And so tonight, I welcome you home, and I say to you, thank you.